In this video, we have already assembled the MST RMX4, and now it is time to do the full electronics install on it. I am going to show you step by step every single thing that it takes to get this car from bare chassis to up and running with a set of electronics on it. That way, if you need any help, if you are installing parts and you're curious about how to do any of the things, hopefully this video is helpful for you. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy. This is Rootside RC, you'll tend to find me bashing or crawling or drifting or racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. Let's get started by going over the parts that I'm going to use here today. I have the Futaba 6PV controller, great, great controller there that we're going to be using. Steering will be done with the Yokomo SPO2DV2, going through the Yokomo DP302 V4 Gyro. Power is going to be controlled with the Furatec Slide Tech Pro ESC, paired with their Voltmaster 540 10.5 turn drift specific motor. Now, I do like to run bullets uh, for my battery and I have these from Furatech that I haven't tried yet. They are a stepped four to five millimeters so that means most shorty batteries you can use either the four or five millimeter bullets on them and they have the little fancy like poles on the top. Start with the ESC and the ESC is all the way and they're very very far back here. The RMX kit it actually provided this double-sided tape, so we're gonna just cut it to length. Peel off both surfaces and cover that complete ESC mount. I guess I should have noted off camera, I already confirmed the orientation that I wanted for the ESC and some of that kind of thing. So you need to do that first. Sorry for not showing you that. But I'm gonna have the ESC basically as far back and as high up as it can due to wire length. Just squish the ESC down there on that tape. That is all we need for that. To get us started. I'm gonna. I put the went ahead and put the pinion here that is provided with the MST kit with its set screw onto the motor, just loosely, just literally, just barely on there. With making sure that that set screw is on the flat. What we're looking for now is as we set the motor here, just roughly, what does that spacing look like? We have a couple screws from the kit. We're gonna put one of them in there very loosely into this front pivot point. Again, just to get an idea of what we're looking at here. Because remember, you can clock where these wires go in. You can change that. You can put it in various orientations around here. But this looks like it'll work quite nicely. I'm gonna use my other screw and go ahead and just barely get it started. So now that we have everything roughly where we want it, it just barely cinch up that motor mount and what that's going to do is uh, help hold the motor square to everything else and we can confirm that the pinion and the spur are actually in the alignment that we would want we have as much contact full contact between both gears as we can now what we're going to look at if we flip it around here is we're going to look at the gear mesh so of course as we open this up it'll open or close um, there's different tricks. There's a paper trick where you take a very thin piece of paper and you kind of use it to smash. You see here how you can actually see the teeth marks in the paper. You kind of use it to smash and then uh, tighten down the motor. Let's see what happens as we do that. If I pull it out now, it should continue to mash that paper a little bit as it goes. And it does. And then you can check like how tight is your gears. And one of the things that I really struggle with when I do the paper is I do it too tight. What I want to be able to see is that I can rock both gears. They should not be forced at the exact contact together. I want I want the I want to be able to rock them just slightly. So I want to open this up even just the smallest smallest amount. It's okay to take your time here. And go back and forth and back and forth until you're comfortable with it being right. I want the slightest gap in there. You see how now I can hold this pinion and I can just barely rock the spur gear back and forth, but yet I also have a whole lot of contact. If you open it up too much, this metal pinion will end up stripping your plastic spur gear. But if you have it too tight, it puts a lot of extra drag and stuff on the motor. So I like to default ever so slightly too loose. With that set as I like it, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that one of them's tight. I'm going to back the other one out. Now I'm going to then put a drop of Loctite 
one by one onto each one of these screws, they, uh, with the heat and the vibration of the motor, they can easily come undone. I almost forgot over here, now that the motor is uh, loctited in and tightened down, we're gonna remove this set screw from the pinion, put a little dab of Loctite on it, and then reinstall it. Again, making sure that that lines up as well with the gear as possible, side to side, and that you are on that flat of that motor shaft. Now is a good time to install the sensor wire. This is a six wire plug that's in the side of the motor. You can see it right here. Your motor or your ESC or something should have come with one. If not, you can buy one independently. Uh, notice that the little pins in there are offset. They are not in the center. That means this can only plug in one way and you need to be very careful as you do so. If you bend any of those plugs, uh, those little pins in there, you're going to be very sad. Once that starts in there, then I like to use like a little pick. This is a super small screwdriver and help push it all the way in. You will want to route that wire very carefully around. And then like on this Furitech, there's two different sensor ports here. Both of them work. It's just whichever one is more convenient for you. And making sure that's in there. Looks like my sensor wire is a little bit long. You can get these in different lengths in order to make that wiring as, as neat and tidy as possible. Now we get to jump into the soldering part of tonight's entertainment. And don't worry, it's not that bad. So many people online get really scared of soldering, but if the truth is, if you can do this in the RC hobby, it unlocks a whole nother level of capability for you. We're gonna be soldering a few different things. Uh, these wires up here are all the ABC wires that go to the motor itself. So those are gonna end up getting these little bullets that Furitech sent with the ESC and motor. Uh, they're gonna get those soldered on and then they're gonna plug into these little female uh, soldered on leads here. If your motor doesn't have those, then you just solder the wires directly onto the little tabs on the motor. Easy peasy. The other two here are your power wires. And again, that's where these uh, Furitech pull little bullets, four and five millimeter stepped bullets are gonna come in. We're gonna need some solder itself. We're gonna use a little flux and we're gonna use a soldering iron, all of this stuff and a little and a little holder. All of this stuff's rather inexpensive and once you have it, you have it for everything. I can't emphasize how much this really unlocks full potential of RC for you. So I highly recommend you get it. All the links to all of these parts will be down in the video description. You're gonna look at first your motor wires and you're gonna look at how long they need to be in order to attach to your motor. Now, this is super duper close here, and a lot of the times in most e uh, RC setups, it's not this tight between the ESC and the motor. So I've already trimmed these wires a little bit shorter for normal usage, where it's like maybe the motor's in the rear, ESC's up closer to the front. These are really close together, which means we could really shorten these wires dramatically, something like that. And the truth is, I don't want to, because if I do that, then the next time I put these in a different chassis, I'm going to have to extend the wires because they're going to be too short. So I'm going to leave them the length that they are, but you cut them to the length and then you need to, the first step is to pre-tin your leads. So you strip off just a little bit of wire, you put it into, you get a little bit of flux on the tip, just like that. On your soldering tip here, you pre-tin it by putting just a little bit of solder on it. And then when you touch that pre-tinned tip to that rosin, to that flux, it just sucks all of that straight onto that wire. It should look nice and coated and have plenty of uh, solder on it. Now you see on my little handy dandy case here, it'll, it'll hold these bullets down in these little slots. We're gonna kind of do the same thing with the little bullet. We're gonna hold this here and warm it up and put a little bit of solder down in it. See how that works? And then we can take that wire, lay it in there, and just melt. All you're doing is melting the solder to the solder. All right, so then you hold this right here and just wait a little bit. You'll see the color change. You'll see it kind of harden as it cools. And then you are in good shape. See how easy that is? 
Now, of course, we need to repeat this for the other two motor wires. All three of those are now soldered on there, just like the first. And what we need to do now is simply just plug them in here. But it's really important to know that which one is A, B, and C. See, the motor actually is labeled A, B, C with those plugs. So is the ESC. With a censored setup, these must match. With the non-censored setups, a lot of times you can swap them to reverse the rotation of the motor. You cannot do that in a timed censored motor. So this first one on the bottom is A. And of course you can plug them in. I believe it, anyway, you can plug them in from either side. So I'm going to plug them in from this side because that'll let me tuck these wires in a little bit. So that is the motor. Now we still need to solder on our bullets for power. These will then solder very similar to those uh, other bullets that we did. We're going to bring in here. We're going to get it a little warm at first. We're going to fill these little puddles right here with solder. And then through that kind of divot there with our pre-tinned ends, Gonna come in and we're gonna let everything melt together. Then how these Firatech ends work is you just slide this right over. You have the ability with a little set screw to go in through the top and help make sure that it holds on. Awesome. I love it. That'll make it a whole lot easier to push in and out of the batteries. Uh, this is where I like to slide my battery in, route my power wires around and understand exactly how long they need to be. And so like you can see here, my power wire comes in right there for the positive and then the negative will come over here and it looks like it's going to be just long enough. One of the things I recommend for you when you're looking at your drift car is I always like to put my battery in and out from the same side every time and make sure then that I cut one of the wires shorter than the other one. So that one can't make it over here. You see how it can't make it over here. That's going to keep me from plugging this in backwards. Now we have the ability just like that to plug both the bullets in. Look, that looks great too. I like it. Nice and tidy. Making sure this is tight enough here that it cannot get into that pinion gear. If you leave that loose and it can get over there into that pinion gear, that'll be bad. Uh, if your wires are a little bit longer than mine are, honestly, I'd probably rather that they were, then I'd be very tempted to run a uh, zip tie through something here on the chassis and the wires to hold them in place. Make sure, again, keep them nice and tidy and away from any of the gearing. Up next is the servo install. We're going to route the wires through the bracket and it should just slide in beautifully. You're going to then line it up with the four screw holes. We're going to note that the spline is to the front. It came with four screws plus some little washers that they want you to use. And just like that servo is mounted. Note that I don't have the servo horn on or the servo linkage. We're going to be doing that after we actually power up the servo for the first time and make sure that it's centered. The last two components, of course, is the receiver itself and the gyro. We're going to be mounting them somewhere down here on this bottom chassis. Your gyro needs to be on a firm level flat surface. So you do not want it up here. You do not want it near the vibration of the servo itself. So we're going to end up on this bottom chassis plate, probably down here somewhere. And we're going to end up that receiver right next to it. You want to be able to get to the buttons on the gyro. It has been proven that where you put your gyro forward or backwards or side to side does not matter. Okay, we can have that argument down in the comments if you want. I can share some fun videos with you. It does not matter. It needs to be flat. It needs to be uh, solidly mounted to a vibration-free spot. This bottom chassis plate is going to be perfect for both of these components. Similar to the ESC, we're just going to use some double-sided tape in order to mount them. Uh, the wire from the ESC, I have it snaked in underneath the motor here. It plugs into channel 2. From your gyro, you will have to have one channel into channel one. That's for the steering input. Then you'll typically have another wire that needs to go into. You can do channel three, you can do channel four. It doesn't really matter. It needs to be a channel that you can assign in the controller. And that's gonna be for your gyro gain. And then you have the wire from the servo goes and connects to the gyro itself. And this is all very fiddly. Uh, you need to be very careful with the orientation. A lot of the times the plugs are actually described as to which one is negative, positive, and sensor. Uh, that sensor is typically to the outside, but you need to be careful. You need to watch the instructions on your receiver. And also, even for right here, I'm not 100% sure if I just plugged in 
that servo correctly to the gyro. So once I get it fired up, if I don't get any signal out of it the first time, I'm gonna reverse them and go back in. It's really unfortunate that these can go in either way. So you have to be very careful about the orientation of all these plugs. This is where a lot of people get tripped up. I fired the car up, I still don't have everything actually hooked up. And if I turn the steering, if I turn the steering on the controller over here, you will see that the servo moves. And then if I come back here to the gyro and I get it, and if I wiggle the gyro, the servo moves again. So that means everything's connected correctly there. We can go ahead and mount everything down to the car. Everything's powered up, steering trim zeroed, everything's set. It's finally time to put the servo linkage on. So we're gonna put it in there, looking for as close to straight up and down as we can get. It's not perfect, but it is really, really close. You want this to be about as centered as possible because as you want every little bit of movement for both my steering and the gyro to be the same each direction. And if you have your steering endpoints off, if you have your center off, it's gonna look a little bit different. So you do wanna watch that. To finally put our servo linkage on and go ahead and adjust its length to get our steering center. Now there is clearly more to this than what I am showing you right here because you now have to calibrate your controller to your ESC. You need to set up your gyro. Uh, this servo is programmable. If I need to do any tweaking to it, I need to do that. All of this kind of stuff is now required, but uh, that is all dependent on the exact components that you're going to choose. And so I'm not gonna go through that with all of these components that I have here today because it's probably not the same ones that you are using. I really hope that this video has been useful for you if you are looking for how to install the electronics from start to finish in the RMX 4 from MST. If you have any questions about what I've done, please leave them down in the comments. If you're still looking to buy the components for your RMX 4, then I have a list in the video description of some of the ones that I'm using here today but then also super budget friendly ones and also like kind of what my go-to setup would be along with the ones that are here. So I hope that is useful for you. And all of those individual components, I have separate videos on. So if you need to know how to set up the gyro, how to pair the controller, how to calibrate the controller and the ESC and all that, then I have a specific video for you. So thank you for watching and goodbye.